welcome to another Unity tutorial video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I've been doing before now. What I'm going to do here is show you around a project I was working on previously to help another person learn visual scripting in Unity. This project contains a lot of work when it comes to the UI as well as data management and I'll show you exactly what I mean here in just a moment after I show you how this project currently works. I'm going to start by hitting the play button and so as you can already see here this which used to say money display up here now says a number so let's look at that first we named it money display and we've got a simple little graph here so simple right for spending money earning money Update the money display and start. So the first thing we do on start is we run the update money display here. And all it does is it converts this saved variable to a string and updates the text. Very simple, straightforward. We've got it earn money. We give it a number. It automatically adds it, plops it in there. And then we've got the spend money one, which is a lot more complicated here because of the fact that, well, I don't have enough money. Uh, they might cause a problem. So let's go ahead and show you here. I've got this button that just shows me how the error panel pops up there. And it'll automatically close on its own. See, like that. Or I can click the close button, it goes away. Uh, we have a list here which contains one of every item that exists currently in my game. And this thing here. So what we can do is we can choose an item. It says we selected it, good, good. We hit the spend, and hey, look at that. It puts it there into the inventory slot. We can do it again. Choose a new item. Oh, we select that one. We hit spend, and you can see the money's going down. Um, we can hit earn. It'll give us more money. We have just a bunch of different little things. Not all these things are functional. I was kind of in the middle of doing this kind of stopped and started working on the other offerings and stuff that I've got. But as you can see, this is the beginnings of a system that uses just the UI a little bit here to deal with some inventory and money. Let's go ahead and look at the dropdown. This one I am especially fond of because I had never worked with dropdowns before. And as you can see here, all we've got is we've got one disabled template. We've got the label and the arrow. But the dropdown itself has a very complicated graph here. So let's give you the overview. And so this is what we got in the beginning. When we first start, we create a list and we cache it. And then we go to our master list, which is a concept that we haven't gone over before, but I will get into it here. But this master list is a variable attached to my item manager here, which basically contains every item that the player can have. Or this master list could be used for any number of things. It could be used for quest tracking, it can be used for inventory tracking, it can be used for mission tracking, anything like that. But basically all it is is an object I have called item manager, which contains a single object variable that is a dictionary. That's all it is. Everything else outside of that just does whatever it wants to do. So back in the drop down, we go for each through that dictionary. We loop through the master list and then each item we take the key and we create. We add that key to the list and then when we're done we create the components for all those options that we added. It's really all it is. And so that's why this thing that only has one option here becomes something with a lot more options in it once we actually hit the play button. You see here now we've got all these options instead of just the one. Each one of these options here is created on the fly as soon as I hit start from all the items within my item manager master list. It's very important to know how to deal with data when it comes to this sort of thing. Now you might look at this and think this is all we've got, but if we actually go in here to my prefabs, like my crew template, you see that prefab has a ton of data associated with it too here. And it's got all these different things on it. It's got images, it's got values, we've got bonuses. And so I can use all this information combined with my item manager 
to do some really cool things. Like, I've got a graph here that will loop through the master list and find specific items for you. Or I've got this one here that you give it the number and it pulls out the actual object. And then we've got like this one, which runs through the master list and gets us the actual value of a variable off of a specific object, which again, it uses, uses that other subgraph here that I previously created to find the object. Uh, we've got one here called get bonuses. This one is really interesting. So we give it a bonus that we're looking for and then a prefix. And it goes through and the first thing it does is it resets this bonus value graph to zero just so that we're starting from scratch. And then it loops through all of the save variables with the prefix that we supplied it. And it gets the specific bonus and it feeds it out here. It looks through this. It's looking for bonuses, you see. Anything that has bonuses, then it goes through the bonuses. And this is what's really important, is being able to actually loop through data and understand what you're doing when it comes to a lot of this UI stuff. Because like we've got like input field here. It's very simple. It doesn't even have anything. But the spend button, the spend button, that is where it's interesting. We start here when you click the button. The first thing it does is check and see which caption is selected here. And if it matches the entered, it does one thing here. And if it doesn't match entered, it does something else. So you can see it's very complicated. So complicated. <laughs> I would like to stop for a moment and show you some of the things that I have available on my itch page real quick. Some of these you may have seen a video for. Some of these you probably haven't, but I've thrown together some subgraphs that you can just literally download, import into your project, and then click and drag them into the visual scripting components on your objects and just have functionality. These are things that are fairly commonly used ideas that people get hung up on, and I thought I would try to make things a bit easier for them. And as you can see here, I've got a few. I've got a dictionary saver subgraph. This one is huge, in my opinion. This allows you to take a dictionary and actually save your dictionary between sessions. Now, mind you, it is still uh, restricted in that you can't save game objects and you can't save other things outside of the, your standard, you know, floats and strings and integers and booleans or whatever, but it still allows you to have a dictionary persist from one session to the next, which can help you a lot with player inventory things. Another one here, infinite scrolling background. It's, it's just a simple script. You drop on a background image and that background will become tiled and depending on how your player moves, it'll adjust and it'll just keep scrolling infinitely. It's good stuff. I have a simple drag and drop subgraphs. You've seen that. You, you put one on an object you want to be able to drag around. You put one on a place that you can drop them. This one, actually, there's multiple iterations available to it and everything. Um, I've got other graphs here, too. You've even got some old games that I started working on here. Uh, but these are all things that I am going to be using myself, and that's why I made them and I offered them up for free to everyone else out there. So if there's something like this that you feel that you could use, let me know. Hit me up via my Discord. The link is in the description below. Contact me via my itch page. Leave a comment below the video. Let me know how I can help you make your video game better. And remember, while you're here, click that like button for me down below the video and subscribe to the channel. So now that I've given you a general overview of this uh, project that I created a while back, let's talk about the item manager, the master list, data, and stuff like that. First things first, the master list. This is a concept that is not new to me or anybody. Specifically, it's been around forever. It's just a simple variable. It doesn't change it's on this object. So every time it loads, it'll be the same thing. This is done differently in coding. You type everything out manually. But basically, what I've got here is one variable, AOT dictionary, right here, that has a string and a game object. And basically this is a way to easily reference a specific game object prefab, mind you, prefab, not 
objects in your scene, but actually prefabs that you have created here uh, using just a simple string. And that's all it is. You add an item here. It's going to be a string on one side, item ID, and then you have your game object here. You click and drag the game object into it, and then you hit the plus button and that adds it there. That's all there is to it. Now, when dealing with this, this first thing here, this is what's known as the key. This first field of a dictionary must be unique. So every single item entered in here must have its own unique name. It doesn't have to be strings. If you felt like it, you could use integers and you could just have everything numbered one, two, three, so on and so forth and reference them that way. Personally, I prefer using strings because it's more user friendly. You know what you're getting when you call it instead of just a random number. But how you do that is up to you. And then these prefabs, these prefabs can literally be anything you want. Right now, the prefabs I'm using here for these templates are completely empty. They have nothing. They are empty game objects with a script machine attached to them and a bunch of variables defined. And these variables can be used to define things outside of what this object actually does. Like I've got the key, this is crew template. So if we go back to our item manager and we look for crew template, that's the name. So that literally is the item ID side of things. That is the unique identifier. And then we have type and subtype, which allows us to use this information when going through the master list using something like find objects and master list to actually pull up a specific item without knowing exactly which item it is, or to allow us to pull up a random item within a subset of the whole. So let me explain how that works. You see, I've got this one here called get objects of type. And so what this is, is we just give it a word and it uses this find objects and master list and returns a list of objects that match the criteria. If we wanted to get every crew member, we could use type crew, just type in the word crew and it'll pull it up there. Very easy to do that. I've given a high level overview of a lot of complicated processes within Unity visual scripting in this video today. I have a feeling that I haven't gone over them well enough. So if there are any specific topics in this video that you really want to know more about, I would love to hear from you. I have taken this project that I've shown you today and I've broken it out into smaller pieces and that's what I've got available on my itch. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video. Uh, please, again, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything from it, please click that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below the video. So if there is something that you want to know now, let me know and I will see what I can do about teaching that to you right away. See you guys again next time. Have a great day.